so we uh, just took a bus from Merida to, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, uh, Zibil Chultan or something. And that was probably the bumpiest bus ride I've ever been on. And now we get off the bus and we are in the middle of nowhere and it's all of a sudden really quiet and it's nice. And I'll show you what we got here. Popo. Hey buddy. And this is where we're gonna head here. Our first major venture took us about 15 kilometers outside of Merida. First stop, Zibil Chaltun Maya Archaeological Site. If you're visiting Merida to explore what's left of the ancient Maya civilization, Zibil Chaltun is a great place to start. It's close to the city, not too busy, and small, so there's very little chance of getting lost. Its claim to fame is the Temple of Seven Dolls. Unfortunately, we've spent way too much time swimming, and the park closed before we could make it there. At the center of the city ruins is the Cenotes Laca. Pork pronunciation is going to be a common theme here, I'm sorry. Okay, the last thing I want is to lose my GoPro down there. <laughs> so, I have it tied around my wrist. I'd like to make note that there are literally thousands of cenotes scattered all over the Yucatan Peninsula. Some have been really built up with stairs and swimming platforms, and some have been left untouched. This is certainly not the most impressive cenote, and we'll be visiting more before leaving Mexico, but I like that this one was clean and had a ton of fish, as you can see. There was also a visitor center, gift shop, and a museum, which was massive, and I definitely recommend checking it out if you're into history. After wandering the ruins for a few hours, we were dehydrated, exhausted, and craving a beach to cool off. So we headed back for the night with plans to take a bus the following day to the nearest port city called Progreso. If you're headed to Mexico for the relaxing, sandy beach, pina colada sipping, reef snorkeling vacation, stick to the east side of the Mexican peninsula called Quintana Roo. That's the side along the Caribbean coast with the aqua blue water and the hundreds of resorts. If you'd rather explore a slightly more authentic Mexico, and by that I mean one which doesn't cater to quite as many tourists, the Yucatan Peninsula with the emerald green water of the Gulf Coast might be more your style. I'm not saying either is better than the other, and you can certainly make a day trip across the peninsula, which we actually did. But with that said, the beach in Progreso left a lot to be desired. The narrow strip of sand sits adjacent to the ship port and it's a bit of a tourist trap. It's jam-packed with cruise ship goers on day excursions and many local tourists from Merida. There's about 30 restaurants that literally sit on the beach, and despite making what's already a very small beach feel even more cluttered, they do offer a nice variety of really good food. Beyond the strip though, the city doesn't have much to offer. Up next, El Corchito. Better known as Raccoon Island, this ecological reserve is about 36 kilometers from Merida and right outside the city of Progreso. The park's hidden amongst the mangroves on the opposite side of the canal and it's accessible only by boat. The cost of admission was 35 pesos, or about 2 Canadian dollars, which included the ferry across. Once there, you'll have access to three open air cenotes and two more shallow pools, all of which you can swim in. El Corchito is known for the raccoons, but it's also home to a band of coquis and has iguanas, turtles, boa constrictors, and crocodiles. You aren't allowed food in the park, and it's easy to see why. The animals are so used to people, they come right up to you. Be careful, because they'll definitely steal your stuff. Go early if you want the park to yourself, otherwise it gets extremely busy later on in the day. This, I feel like this is going to be cold. <laughs> it's really warm, Liam. It's not warm. Okay, let's finish off with a couple cenote reviews. We visited six cenotes Ooh, in total cool. during our trip, and I honestly can't say which was my favorite. Everyone is so different, and I recommend visiting lots while you're here. It's a great way to cool off, and many are associated with ancient Mayan cities, which you can also visit and turn into a day trip. In my next video, I'm going to do a big comparison of all the cenotes I visited, and make recommendations on which I think are a must-see. <laughs> so 
Zenote Expatun and Zombacal are maintained by the same company and 100 pesos gets you access to both. These ones are accessible by vehicle, and once there, it's a short walk from the road to both cenotes, but you can also rent bikes. Expatun is bordered by a rock face on one side that is covered in creeping roots. The turquoise water is stunning, and it has some fish, although not as many as the Zibel Chaltun cenote. It is shallow on one end and dives into a massive dark crevice on the other end. It's a little eerie, but definitely worth seeing. We were told that some people do recreational scuba diving. As you saw, there are showers available, as well as changing rooms, which is nice, but it also means that it's a very busy cenote. Many different tour groups come here, so keep that in mind when planning, and maybe try to hit this one up a little bit earlier in the morning. To get any deeper than, like, the mouth of it, basically, yeah, is impossible. Oh, we just found another good one. Diving in. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> this one is cool. Cenote Zambacal is different from Expatun in that it's semi-open and the entrance kind of feels like a cave. This cenote is very small, but very deep. It dives off quickly towards the back of the cave and disappears into darkness. It's also the coldest cenote we visited. We were there in the middle of the afternoon, but because it's partially covered, the sun never reaches the water to warm it up. The good news is that far fewer people actually swim in this one, so it's a little more peaceful. By far the defining feature of this cenote is the stalagmites and stalactites that jut out above and below the water. This is something we didn't see at any other cenote we visited. Alright, that's all for now. Thank you so much to everyone for watching. Consider subscribing to my channel if you enjoy going on these adventures with me. These are the very first vlogs I've ever shot, so I'm trying to find my style. In my upcoming videos, I do a lot more on-camera explaining and a lot less voiceover. Let me know what you think in the comments and join me in the next video, where I visit three more impressive cenotes, plus I'll review my favorite cenotes overall. I also take a trip across the Yucatan Peninsula to Quintana Roo for a catamaran cruise around Isla Mujeres. And I'll visit one of the most important archaeological sites of Mayan culture, Uxmal.